Japanese fashion is certainly in a league of its own in many cases, but it doesn't come without its outside influences. And today, we're gonna explore just what those outside influences are, particularly when they're coming from the West. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm Reggie Casual, and this is The Casual. I never did it like that, but seems good. Let's hit the intro. So we're gonna nip this one in the butt, hip hop. Now hip hop has certainly had an influence on Japanese fashion as a whole and to a degree, but it isn't as much as an influence as as many have made it out to be. Shall I explain? Now this overratedness of hip hop in Japanese fashion is largely due to the popularity of Nigo's Babe that used the motif of American hip hop to set the fashion world ablaze with its obvious Japanification, if you will, of America's homegrown soon to be at the time global cultural movement in hip hop. And in many ways, Bape carried the fashion mantle forward for hip hop as a whole, but that's a whole nother story that we'll probably do at another time. In the context of Japanese fashion, however, hip hop and its styles were actually the next wave for the Japanese youth after years of being mired in British punk in the late 80s and early 90s. Hiroshi Fujiwara often talks about how he convinced Nigo that hip hop was the path forward and to focus his efforts on that and commodifying it which was, in hindsight, great advice. In the context of all of Japanese fashion, however, hip hop takes on a noticeably late 90s look. You got baggy pants and the old New York Wu-Tang styles are still quite popular in Japan today. Sub-labels like Miharu Yasuhiro's Mine and Magic Stick Entertainment noticeably take up that mantle, styling the Japanese way as far as hip hop is concerned. And there are more than a few Japanese secondhand shops that dabble in hip hop exclusively. So while hip hop is certainly known in Japan and it has a sizable movement, it, the influences of other styles probably have a leg up on it, especially this next one. And that is English workwear. English workwear is also one of those underrated or understated influences in Japanese fashion, but it has its roots strewn throughout many different brands in Japan. While British workwear brands have been sparsely represented, the brands themselves, the adoption of British workwear silhouettes are incredibly common in the country. Brands like Engineer Garments and stores like Hummingbirds Hill do a fair job in representing the work styles promoted in the UK with a Japanese twist, of course. And English brands like Trickers find a great home in Japan and often have exclusive collaborations with not only other brands, but stores themselves. In fact, one of the most prominent influences of Japanese fashion is the work of Nigel Kaborn, whose brand of punk-infused British workwear is wildly popular in some Japanese fashion circles to the point where it's incredibly difficult to purchase on the rack, like at retail. The fact that it has been selling out for years to this day with next to no marketing is a testament to the brand's influence and popularity in the country of Japan. That said, British workwear is an integral part of Japanese fashion as a whole, and the influences can be seen pretty much everywhere if you're willing to look. But obviously it doesn't stop there. You know, we talk about like menswear, suits, tailoring, and say that the best comes from Italy and the UK. And while both have phenomenal reputations and deservedly so, imagine a place that takes the experimentation and innovation of Italian bespoke, mixed with the conservative classic and durable structure spearheaded by the British. And imagine if that place took all those aspects and traits just as seriously as the origin countries. You would then have Japan. Seriously, menswear in Japan is sort of the unspoken ugly duckling in Japanese fashion. It's not ugly by any stretch, but it just gets less attention due to its more bold and exciting street fashion cousin because that's what everybody knows about Japan, street fashion in Japan. But make no mistake, Japanese tailoring and suiting is some of the best in the world and largely because the Japanese tailors learned it from the best. See, it's not uncommon for Japanese tailors to train in Italy and the UK for years, only to come back to Japan and put their talents to the test. And because of that, Japan has some of the most knowledgeable and gifted tailors on the planet. Another big reason Japan gets less airtime in menswear is because Japanese people tend to be a bit slimmer and smaller, which is a bit unsuited, no pun intended, or pun intended, whichever. They're just a lot smaller than the average Western population. But make no mistake, one step into shops like Beams F, United Aero Suiting Options, or the numerous independent retailers, and you'll be thoroughly convinced that Japanese menswear is on par with some of the best out there. Mix in a little bit of traditional Japanese flavoring, and you also have unique takes that can't be seen anywhere else in the world. 
In fact, I'd say menswear in Japan is the hidden gem. And that should come as no surprise because almost everything in Japan is a freaking hidden gem, but it's still amazing and worth checking out. One of my personal favorite influences from the West that Japan has partaken in is Belgian design. And that becomes increasingly clearer once you start looking at designer fashion. The popularity designs of Margiela, Martin Margiela, and de Millemeester, Dries van Newton, and Ralph Simmons are incredibly noticeable once you inch past the barrier that connects the Harajuku street styles to the more ritzy cousins in Omotosando and Aoyama. Now, if you don't know those areas, Omotosando and Aoyama, don't fret. They're just areas in Japan that have a more upscale designer look when it comes to fashion. However, I will take you to those places in a later episode. But more on this Belgian design influence. Japanese designer labels like Color, Sakai, and the well-known Undercover aren't shy about these Belgian influences. In the case of Undercover, Jun Takahashi himself credits the designs of Martin Margiela and Vivian Westwood, but we're not talking about her right now, and inspiring him to pursue a career in fashion. Even many of the styles in Japan, styles, not just fashion design, take on a Belgian approach with many flowing asymmetrical cuts like those seen in Miharu Yasuhiro, often frayed and ripped as if hastily put together, but seamlessly blending into an array of subtle elements to complete something that's thought-provoking and elegant. Or the minimal thoughtfulness of labels like Rainmaker Kyoto that blend the sheer simplicity of traditional fabrics and combining it with contrasting materials to achieve something familiar but altogether new and exciting. This continues even with up and coming designer brands today, brands like Ujo and Sovam, albeit in a Japanese way, of course. And it has since become the staple approach to much of Japanese designer fashion, this Belgian mixed with Japanese traditional approach. It's not a spoken influence, but it's certainly there. And it's definitely one of those things that if you know, then you know. And now, you know. We have two more on our list, but before that, let's get into a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. A big part of fashion is community, and building a fashion brand or any business requires a strong one. That's why using Squarespace for your new website might be the way to go. Besides being packed with great website templates, built-in SEO and analytics, Squarespace's new members areas make it easy to create, foster, and grow a community of true fans. Give back by giving members exclusive content, discounts, and much more, all while monetizing your business. So use our code squarespace.com slash the casual to save 10% off of your first website and let Squarespace help you build your brand, business, and community. Now our second to last on this list is Americana. Of course, right? This is the one all my American brethren were expecting and hoping I didn't skip just because I'm in Japan, I don't wanna give it a yeah, list. That would be sacrilegious if I didn't mention Americana. See, the influence of American classics like Rebel Without a Cause certainly had an impact on post-war Japan. Many of us know this in more ways than one, right? And fashion, when it comes to that, well, fashion in Japan, when it comes to Americana, took on a life of its own. We really don't need to go too far into the detail as there are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube about Japanese Americana and its history even from the casual. But what can be said about the influence of Americana is that it's enduring and constantly evolving. And while many will certainly and rightly point to classic Americana styles involving denim and Southwestern inspirations, 90s outdoor and college prep Americana are also hugely popular in Japan. In fact, the de facto term in Japanese is American Kajibaru for many of the styles that replicate or influence by American fashion. In the late 80s in Japan, American casual was entering its prime and became so much of a fixture in fashion that the term shibukaji was adopted. Shibukaji is a portmanteau of the words shibuya and casual. Shibukaji style was inspired by the relaxed styles that came into vogue during the late 80s and early 90s in America, and the Japanese just picked it up as well. And this became a major component of what followed after with Japan adopting American street styles. So you see kind of like there's this ebb and flow of adoption and then flipping it the Japanese way. So this form of Americana wasn't just simply denim and workwear, but actually a more relaxed approach that still prevails in Japan today. You see it all over the place. In fact, Uniqlo's entire MO is basically the Japanification of American casual 
which is a testament of Japan's enduring fascination of American lifestyles. But while Americana is certainly a huge influence on Japanese fashion, the influence that tips the scales in Japan's favor of trying all these different kind of machinations has to be British punk. The advent of Vivian Westwood notwithstanding, because they love her here, the entire movement of punk was the wave that perfectly aligned with the youth culture of the 80s all the way into the late 90s in Japan. You're talking about brands like Neighborhood, Undercover, Vizvum, Hysteric, Glamour, Sakai, Miharu Yasuhiro, Double Taps, and even Bape owe a lot of their influence to British punk. Now this clearly wasn't in the aesthetic of every single one of those brands, but it rather pointed to punk's disruption of the status quo and all the aforementioned brands, more so the aforementioned brand runners, did just that. They changed how Japanese fashion was worn and expanded the idea of wearing whatever the hell ever. But perhaps no Japanese designer embodies this better than Junya Watanabe. Now, forgive me for not using someone like Takahiro Miyashita or Jun Takahashi or even Rei Kawakubo in this instance, but Junya's brand of practicality yet daring is so easily seen as a translation of punk through the lens of young Japanese growing up in the 80s and 90s that it has to be mentioned and it has to be admired. But perhaps it's because even today, Japanese designers and fashion enthusiasts still invoke punk in large numbers. The idea of wearing you and committing to your own aesthetic and trying different things and going against the status quo, especially in street fashion, is so prevalent in Japan that it's noticeable to anybody visiting Japan if they're paying attention to fashion and style. And to be honest, the UK doesn't get enough credit when it comes to Japanese fashion because of the popularity of bigger brands. But the entire motif is from that country. Like the entire idea is Japan intermingling with British punk, Japanese design intermingling with that and creating something that's just so dazzling to see that you, once you know it and once you see it, it's hard to ignore. And that's what we got for today. However, Japan has countless other inspirations we will look to explore in the future, so why not suggest some of those other things, brands or topics you'd like to explore in the future in the comments. Or better yet, if you're feeling froggish, answer our question for this episode. What style influence do you think Japanese designers, fashion enthusiasts, and brands have done exceptionally well? Let it all be known. Or at the very least, drop a like, hit notifications, subscribe, but most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy, and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute. Peace.